For the last five years, I've been partnering with Olivia Jones, Ariana Villalobos, and students and parents from our community design team to birth this place, Empower Community High School. Our vision was written by a student. His name is Jay Carter. The vision says, the world is ours. Our mission is authentic education that is led by students, guided by educators, and co-created with community. Empower exists to solve one simple problem. Our education system develops leaders who are equipped with hammers. And they leave our institutions and our schools and we act surprised when they see the world as a bed of nails. That sort of leadership is what got us to where we are today. We believe the next generation of leaders will inherit a world full of problems at the 11th hour. And we at Empower believe in a different model of leadership. Olivia and I believe that the students need to lead like artists. And when we say lead like an artist, what we really mean is create magic, alchemy. And alchemy is defined as a seemingly magical process of transformation, creation, or combination. To lead like an artist is to be an alchemist. It is to take the ordinary and turn it into something extraordinary. So what is step one to leading like an artist? Step one is master the remix. And we believe everything is a remix. Nothing is original. We create the illusion of something new by copying, transforming, and combining the old. I learned this from Kirby Ferguson. And to best understand this, we must turn to the genius of hip hop. In 1988, when the world's most dangerous group hit the stage and said, I'm expressing with my full capabilities. So what you want me to do? I'm expressing with my full capabilities. And now I'm living in correctional facilities. What they were really doing is copying Charles Wright. There's an 18 year difference between those two tracks. And Olivia calls this exercise tracking one's creative ancestry. Remixing is how hip hop became hip hop. Actively sampling, transforming, and combining those transformed samples. And education is no different. We are where we are today precisely because of the remixes of the past. So I'm gonna take you on a little journey of three educational remixes. The first, the SAT. The year is 1905. There's a French psychologist by the name of Alfred Benet, and he invents the very first IQ test in Paris. You fast forward a few years, and 1916, right there in the middle, we have an American psychology professor at Stanford. And for me, I'm pretty sure that's the start of every horror movie I've ever watched. But his name was Louis Terman, and he built upon Benet's idea. And by 1916, we have the Stanford Benet test. The first mass administration of an IQ test in this country occurs when Terman joins the army and signs up for a psychological testing role. What could go wrong? Essentially, they come up with an army alpha test, and you take this test, and if you pass, you get fast-tracked to officer training. If you don't pass, you become reduced to the blunt instrument for force that you're trained to be. Why does this matter? There was another psychologist at the army at the time. It's the man on the right. His name was Carl Brigham. Why does he matter? Well, in 1926, the College Board commissioned Carl Brigham to create the first scholastic aptitude test. By 1930s, Harvard adopts it, 
and shortly the rest of the ivies follow suit. What scares me to death is when you dig in deeper and you find out that Brigham was a known eugenicist at the time. And these folks believed in the innate inferiority and superiority of the races. So it's not by accident uh, that the results of the first army alpha test led them to conclude that people of color, Jews, Mediterraneans, anybody who wasn't a kind of what he would call Nordic was inherently intellectually inferior. How convenient. You mask the pig with lipstick and you pitch it as an opportunity for the underprivileged to lift themselves up. Never mind, they haven't a slumdog millionaire's chance of winning due to the racist design of that test. You fast forward through a whole bunch of interesting history and you come to realize the SAT has survived through a long history of wonderful marketing and systems of power as American as apple pie. You pass this SAT and you can get the fast track to the American dream. You don't pass and you become reduced to the blunt instrument this country wants you to be. We have to be careful of what we remix. Educational remix journey number two, Wakanda and Aurora. Within four weeks of our charter being approved on Juneteenth, 2018, we launched our first summer camp. And the concept was simple. Black Panther had just come out a few months before and we wanted to remix the genius of that new piece of art that was inspiring the world. And the question was, how do we create a space where our children of all colors can be free of colonial violence to explore the wonders of technology, to explore the power of deep cultural knowledge, the power of being, feeling, acting, thinking, speaking, writing freely. And nothing could be more radical in 2020 than that concept for a black body. Remixes can be powerful. They are the bridge from the old to the new. The last journey is the Hustle Collective. This year, we couldn't have Wakanda and Aurora. That was a pandemic. Luckily, a few months before the summer hit, we birthed a program called the Hustle Collective. And it's very simple. Students have access to $100. They can purchase any materials they want. The school ships it directly to their home and they're supported to explore or learn a passion or skill they've always wanted to. In the Hustle Collective, students are called Hustle Challengers and they're paired with a Hustle Champion who acts as a coach. And we remix that word from an organization called Grip Tape. And they've been doing this type of learning for years outside of the system. Together, a challenger and a champion will go on a journey to support that child in birthing their new passion and teaching themselves the new skills. And at Empower, we're betting that the ability to teach yourself and adapt will be the defining skill for the children to thrive in the economy of 2050. And I think the remix here is best embodied in Olivia's sister's current work as a doula. And a doula is a trained professional who provides continuous physical, emotional, and informational support to a mother before, during, and after childbirth. For me, this is my favorite part. The goal is to help her achieve the healthiest, most satisfying experience possible. It's personalized, it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's meeting you where your needs are in this time, in this place. It's a very different model for learning and growth than our current education system even allows. And it forces me to ask, what if our educators approached teaching like a doula, coming alongside students? What if districts weren't just authorizers, or as I experienced them in Aurora, accountability beat cops? What if districts were doulas coming alongside schools in their attempts to birth innovative futures? I'll leave you with one more remix. Almost 20 years ago, my father started a school in our country, Togo. 
It was a school where people could come from miles around, regardless of their educational background, and get trained on the computing skills needed to thrive in the 21st century. And it's no wonder the child who grows up seeing that decides to open a school 20 years later. Everything is a remix. And I'll leave you with these words. To lead like an artist is to be an alchemist. It is to take something that is ordinary and turn it into something extraordinary. And if you've never witnessed such a process, I promise you no word could better describe it than magic. Lead like an artist, master the remix, create the magic, and we'll birth the new. Thank you.